Well, hello, friends. It is Friday, December 18th, and just wanted to send out a quick message of encouragement here today. Uh, I'm actually going to, this will be my last Friday message for 2020. Uh, next Friday is Christmas Day, so I'll be like any of you, I'm sure, with my family and uh, <clears throat> just celebrating Christ's birth with them. And then the following Friday being New Year's Day uh, also just will be good family time. So uh, I'll plan to start these back up in the new year, um, but definitely wanted to get in one final message here in 2020. And all I wanted to share about today, I just wanted to lift up this first. Uh, well, first off, Sunday I'm going to be preaching on Isaiah chapter 9, uh, those opening verses of chapter 9, uh, which are so good, and uh, just that ongoing prophecy about the coming Messiah, and I think there's so much relevance uh, in that passage for us here in Advent 2020, so I'm excited to make those connections. But one of the things that I'll be talking about is this idea of light, uh, light shining in the darkness. And uh, even though I'll reference this on Sunday, I just felt it was worth lifting up again. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Uh, such a great verse in John's prologue there. And, uh, and I just, I think it's such an important verse, not only for Christmas time as we think about the light coming into the world, the light Jesus Christ, his incarnation and um, being among us uh, in human form, but but also just for every day of that reminder that the light has come, right? The light is here among us. The light shines in the darkness. And um, because we see a lot of darkness in our world right now, and it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to feel overcome by that. Uh, 2020, man, what a year of of darkness and just feeling really beaten down and overcome by it. Uh, and I just love that example. If I were in a dark room right now, I'd, I'd light a match uh, and how that match just starts to immediately dispel the darkness. And then the longer you're around the light, your eyes start to adjust and you start to be able to see more. And I just think that's so true of... Uh, it's such a great image for what Jesus does and who he is uh, that, again, darkness can feel so heavy and so all-encompassing. But as soon as that, even just the smallest bit of light is lit, uh, it starts to push back the darkness. And when it's, once it's there, the darkness really doesn't, doesn't overcome it, right? The, the light is, is there. Even if it's small, it has, it starts to push back the darkness rather than vice versa. And so, um, it's just a great reminder for us that even in dark seasons like we're in now, that uh, the light of Christ is still shining brightly, right? Jesus is on his throne. And so that continues to any darkness we're feeling, the heaviness of it. If we focus on him, I truly believe it will start to dispel the darkness. Uh, remember that he already overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil. He overcame the darkness through his death and resurrection. So we trust in that, but also the reminder, and I'll talk about this on Sunday as well, that not only does Jesus say he is the light of the world, but then he tells us as followers that we are to be the light of the world, uh, that, that we have it within us <laughs> because the spirit lives in us. We have that, that power to dispel darkness as well, that, that even just those the smallest act of bringing light into the world through an act of kindness and love through even a smile, even if it's veiled by a mask, <laughs> you can see it in our eyes, right? Uh, those wrinkles on the side of our eyes, you can see when people are smiling. Those, Even those very small acts have the power to start to dispel darkness and to push it back and, and, and to, to shine light into people's lives where maybe <laughs> for everyone, things are feeling very dark. But I, I think for a lot of people right now, uh, I mean, this time of year brings a lot of depression for folks uh, as they think of loss of family members. It's more apparent at this time as they're, whatever reasons, depression is heavy at this time. Then you add a pan global pandemic on top of that. Uh, man, there's a lot of darkness. People need light and they need Jesus, but we can also be that first glimpse of him. We can be that first light that they see. Uh, again, that starts to push back some of that darkness. And ultimately, as I said, the longer then you're around the light, you start to be able to see more. I think the longer people 
um, hopefully are around us and we're shining light into their lives, they start to more clearly see Jesus. That's the goal, not so they see us more clearly, but that they see him more clearly. So I wanna encourage you with that today in your own lives uh, to cling to Jesus, focus on him. He'll start to push back that darkness in your own life, but then also remember of our calling to be the light and to shine that light into others. Look, seek out opportunities here in these next couple of weeks, especially this next week leading up to Christmas, to shine some light into the lives of others and, and just watch and see the ways in which uh, God will work through that. And again, we might not even see it, but I truly believe he'll use those little glimpses to start to, to push back more of that darkness and hopefully through it, to shine a greater light on Jesus Christ for folks. So encourage you with that. Uh, again, thanks to everyone for your involvement in last Sunday's annual meeting and truly could not have gone more smoothly. And um, and just, yeah, if, I, if you're in worship this Sunday in person, I'll see you then. I look forward to preaching. If you're worshiping from home, look forward to connecting with you through the live stream or through the video whenever you watch it. So uh, God bless you, friends. And uh, again, I hope you just have a great weekend and look forward to connecting soon and hopefully as well next week on Christmas Eve. So God bless you.